So my name is Robin Brown and I am the family and community manager for Hope Kids. Um, Hope Kids has six different chapters across the United States, but I obviously work for the Colorado chapter here. My husband, Jake Brown, is the youth pastor uh, here at Discovery. So we've been at Discovery 11 years now and um, love being a part of this community. I've been with my role with Hope Kids a little over a year and have loved having Discovery jump in and be a part of what we do as well. A friend of mine that I worked with um, had kind of told me about this position that had opened up that she thought I would be a good fit for. And so I found out um, who Hope Kids is, serve families with a life-threatening medical condition. Um, and really the mission is to bring hope amongst doctor's appointments and treatment plans to these families and just the belief that hope is a really powerful message. And that's something I definitely could get behind. And so I applied for the position and here I am. <laughs> knowing Discovery's values and just they um, are always looking for ways to be involved in the community, um, to serve um, children and families. And it just felt like it was a really natural fit for Discovery to also get involved with Hope Kids. And so the first event that Discovery did was actually a trunk or treat um, last Halloween. And so we really, um, with Hope Kids, we try to provide some normalcy alongside um, the hope and things that we do. And so to have an event like a trunk or treat where kids can come and trick or treat where most of our families maybe wouldn't go the typical door to door trick or treating because there's too many um, risks with what they might be exposed to, but to come to a safe place, have Hope Kids families only here and have our families serve. So um, it was wonderful. The volunteers decorated their trunks and got really creative. Um, and we had great weather until right when the event ended and then this huge wind and <laughs> rain and stuff came in, but um, it was a really great, great event. And that's kind of how Discovery first jumped in with Hope Kids. One of my first events with Hope Kids was actually a parent date night. And so we were able, we have a great partnership with a um, restaurant downtown and they were able to provide um, just like a patio space where it could just be our Hope Kids families, some appetizers, some drinks. Um, and so we just got to host these parents who really don't get the opportunity often to invest in each other or invest in their marriages um, because a lot of their time is occupied by taking care of their child or children in some cases. And so just to be there and watch these um, parents connect with one another, just have a great old time, they shut down the restaurant. Um, it was just really cool and really showed how important um, even having a little, what may seem little to us type event, um, just how impactful that can be. Um, and it also made me recognize not to take things for granted. Um, when we get those opportunities to connect with one another. So we love volunteers with Hope Kids. So we only have um, three people on staff and we serve just under 700 families across Colorado and we're growing every day. So um, we can only do so much as the three of us on staff. So we really rely heavily on volunteers. Um, so we kind of have our like, pre-COVID, hopefully someday post-COVID volunteer roles, um, which very much looks like um, coming to events with families, greeting them, walking them, helping check them in, um, just coming alongside families just to give them um, just support to show them that people care and show up. And so we're really looking for volunteers who um, are willing to come and just be available. It's a very relational type volunteer role. Um, some, you have, you know, volunteer roles, you have specific tasks and it's like, okay, do this, 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 check, 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 you're done. Ours is a little bit more organic and you have the opportunity to 
come alongside our families, get to know them, um, and just be available to serve them at the different type of events that we host. Um, there's also the opportunity to host an event like Discovery did with the Trunk or Treat. Um, anything that a family, um, that you think your family would enjoy, probably our families would enjoy too. And so we try to put on different types of events that can really um, just bring our families together and give them an opportunity to connect as a family. So if you um, have a creative idea for an event, we always love to hear those. Um, and then on our current COVID time situation, um, volunteering looks a little bit different, but we're actually um, doing some smaller in-person events, but we're hosting a number of virtual events. And so if you have like a special skill, like we have someone who's a great artist who's hosting a virtual painting event for us. So we put together painting kits and have a pickup location where people can come and grab um, the painting supplies and then they go home and then tune in on a Zoom call to do the painting event, um, which is really fun. And so um, for our families, we're just continuing to try to find ways to connect with one another. We prefer to be in person like, like all of us and a lot ways for many different things in our lives but when we can't be in person we're trying to be really creative with ways to connect them virtually too and so having volunteers that want to connect in that way right now is a huge need and a really awesome way to get involved with our families. Yeah so what solidarity I think really means is actually I think interestingly enough in this time of going through a pandemic I think all of us can have a little bit more of an understanding what our Hope Kids families face every day. Um, so our families, I had a mom describe it to me when we were talking about some of the COVID um, protocols that are in place now. She said, well, it's kind of like our Super Bowl. We've been preparing for this all our life um, because some of the isolation that we've been feeling of having to quarantine, um, you know, wear a mask, wear gloves, um, use hand sanitizer all the time. This for some of our families was their life before um, before COVID-19 even was a reality for a lot of us. And so I think that can give us a really great understanding of sometimes how isolating it can feel when you're a family who has a child with a life-threatening medical condition. And, and I think that's the biggest reason why Hope Kids exists is we want to show families that they don't have to be isolated and they don't have to be alone um, just because they're going through something that may require them to approach things a little bit differently. There is a community out there that's willing to come alongside them and make adjustments to our own lives to be able to come alongside and support them. And then I also think there's just power when our families are able to meet and see other families who are going through similar situations. I mean, talk about solidarity right there. They they know from firsthand experience what each other is going through. And so to have opportunities through these events that may seem silly, the events aren't really what's important about our program. They're a means to help us create this opportunity for families not to feel so isolated um, and to just have that connection. And I think any of us can relate, especially now after having quarantine, how important connection is um, just for our quality of life. And we want to provide that for our families no matter what season they're in in their journey with their child. Yeah, I mean, I think we see great reciprocity um, amongst our families volunteers. Again, I, one thing I love about Hope Kids is so much of what we do is just building relationships. Um, and that's and that really is just who we are as Hope Kids. And it feels like sometimes that can be frustrating because you can't have these like tangible like measurements of yes, we accomplished exactly what our goal is. Um, so you have to be creative and loose about how you measure that. But I think there's huge things as a staff member with Hope Kids, um, being alongside these families in their journeys, I have learned so much just about um, resiliency. I've learned about um, perspective. Like there's so many things in life that we 
um, just take for granted. And if we can just change our perspective and recognize value um, in the relationships we have with people and the experiences that we get to have um, and the opportunities that come along that we don't take any of those for granted um, is huge. So I feel like I've learned so much. I think that's kind of what our volunteers learn. And then I think for just our family to family connection, there's great reciprocity where they're just able to come alongside one another. Um, one of the the coolest moments I think I've had in serving with Hope Kids was when um, we had one family whose daughter um, was having a major um, surgery, was terrified, and um, there was a, a kind of 50-50 chance that it was gonna be a successful thing, but they kind of ran out of options um, for everything else. And so um, this family, understandably so, was terrified. The mom was really questioning, like, did I make the right decision? What do I do? And we have a um, private Facebook family forum that um, they can just, just for the community to connect with one another. And so she shared a little bit about her fears. And instantly there was another mom whose daughter had gone through the exact same thing, who was able to reach out to her to kind of come alongside her. And now those two daughters um, both are doing well and are dear, dear friends. And they love, they like sign up to do all the events together and they're always trying to connect with one another. Um, and it just shows how important that connection is. And it completely changed the way this, the first family entered into their daughter having surgery. They had, um, they, they were still scared. There was still a lot of uncertainty, but just to have that support of someone that's saying, hey, I have been there. I understand it's horrible. It's hard, but I'm gonna hold your hand and I'm gonna be there with you. Um, that's huge. And so we see that happen amongst our families a lot too. I think that's just such a gift um, for them and everything that they go through. I think dignity is something that when you haven't ever experienced a situation where you have felt undignified at the expense of other people, um, it's something that you really take for granted. Um, I think dignity is something where you can feel um, equal to everybody around you. I think dignity is um, not ever feeling like less than and um, feeling like you have value to bring to whatever situation that you're in. And I think for um, some of our families, they, because of their medical condition, they can have some um, severe special needs that they're working with. We have families who um, are in a wheelchair. Um, we have families who have, you know, medical equipment that needs to travel and be with them all the time. Um, some of our kiddos have um, trachs. And so I think in there, sometimes in just general public, there's a lot of stares. There's a lot of people moving away from them. Not necessarily because they're they don't want to move towards them, but because they don't they don't want to get it wrong or they don't want to say something wrong or they're just uncomfortable. And so I think when we feel uncomfortable, that causes us to move away. But I think a way that we can really show dignity to people is moving towards. Um, you may not know the right things to say. That's okay. Moving towards them is huge. And I think why volunteers are such a key part of our program is they're showing up and we have this environment that's just Hope Kids family, so they know that it's a safe environment. Kids see other kids in similar situations where, oh, you're in a wheelchair too, or oh, they have a trach too, or you know, if someone has, you know, a seizure in the middle of a Hope Kids event, somewhere else there could get a lot of stares and fear from people around them. But at Hope Kids, we're very concerned. We want to help, but it's out of a more of an understanding. You don't have to be fearful of what's um, going to happen or the stares or questions that you're going to get. And so um, I think that's a big part of our program too, is we just never, we want to just provide an opportunity for our families to feel safe in who they are, to know that they bring value. And we want to provide opportunities for the community around them to move towards them and move in with them. Um, and I think that's really how you can show dignity um, to people who uh, maybe are experiencing life a little bit differently than you which I feel like in so many situations, the reason we don't show dignity to people is because of differences. 
when really I think you find when you move towards those, there's some really cool things that can happen. Um, like we already talked about, like reciprocity, and there's just such huge things that happen when we are willing to move towards instead of move away. Yeah, I mean, I think um, one person can make a huge difference in their community um, and in an organization. Um, I think we have to recognize what making a difference looks like. It may not be that you're touching like a hundred people as one person, but I think you can make a huge impact in one person's life. Um, we have a wonderful volunteer who has, um, she's actually a what her son is a Hope kiddo and he's grown and in college now. So they're a Hope Kids family because one's a Hope Kids family, always a Hope Kids family. But the mom now has chosen to volunteer and it has just been incredible to see her come into a community, having the experience of um, what her son's journey has been to be able to lend that to our current families who are more in the midst of the hard stuff of their journey. Um, and she has made a huge impact everybody knows her name everybody is just so excited when she's the one greeting them at an event and volunteering and um i think if you asked her she would say oh i don't do anything you guys do the hard work i've heard her say that before um but the reality is a lot of the events that we've done and things like that would not be possible without her being willing to be there. Um, and she's um, the first one to share about the mission of Hope Kids. So we'll all get random calls all the time from someone like, you know, so-and-so shared about this, about your mission. So I'd love to get involved. How can I make that get involved? Um, and I know in my own life, I've had teachers, people, um, people from church who have poured into me at different times and they maybe don't even recognize the impact that they've had. But I can look back to those points and say, wow, they really encouraged me. They really, I wouldn't have taken that next step to do something um, without their encouragement being behind them. And so I think when you are willing to just be one-on-one -on -one and impact one person, that easily multiplies um, across. And so then you can take credit maybe for impacting like <laughs> hundreds. But I think I, I would just challenge people that sometimes we don't do anything because we feel like it's too small. We feel inadequate that we don't have the skills needed to, to volunteer or to give or to be a part of something. And I would just challenge you not to let those fears hold you back because I know within Hope Kids, I know here at Discovery, I know in um, many places, all we're asking is for people to be willing to show up. And I really feel like when you're willing to just show up, the other things fall into place and you have the opportunity to be a great um, impact to those around you. By the example you're setting, by just showing up, maybe your kids or your family members are seeing that and that's a great example and impact or just showing up, like I said, to these families, moving towards these families is huge and um, makes a huge impact that you may not even realize. And so you could be missing a really awesome opportunity because you're letting all these fears hold you back. And I would just encourage you to push through those fears, um, let perfect love cast out all fears and, um, and just go for it. And I think you'd be really surprised about um, how impacted you are by doing that and how much you're able to impact people around you too. Um, I think what I'd say to someone who's involved here at Discovery, but not currently serving anywhere, um, you're really missing out. <laughs> I think because I, again, um, I think there's a time and a season where you may be going through something that is really hard and you may feel empty and you may feel like, look, I have nothing left to give. And I, and I understand that and I think there are seasons where that may be true. Um, but I also think sometimes we get stuck in those seasons and one of the best ways to be filled up again is to show up and be willing to serve. Um, I think that most of the times when I volunteered or shown up or been willing to do something, I leave feeling much more impacted probably than anyone I came in contact with, or at least that I know of. Um, and I just think that that's how God wired us. He wired us 
um, with giftings and skills and just that need for connection. And when you're willing to jump in and serve, I think you'll be amazed at the way um, you're blessed through that experience. And there's so many great things that happen on a Sunday morning or a Tuesday or Wednesday whenever you're turning into virtual church these days through a, a church service. Um, there's so much wonderful connection opportunities to God, to others through a church service. But I feel like it's only the tip of the iceberg and you're missing out on some really um, cool things that you can experience if you're just sitting there for that hour, hour and a half a week and not willing to jump in um, and serve somewhere. And I just think that God, what a great way, if you're feeling uncertain or nervous about doing that, um, what a great way to just say, okay, God, take that step of faith and let God show up and show you how he can come alongside you um, to equip you with what you need for whatever you're stepping into. Um, so far, he's never let me down when I've been willing to step into that. Um, and I really believe that's another way not only to grow in your relationship with God, but also to just connect and grow in relationships with other people too. I think I would just love to tell Discovery's community thank you. Um, I feel like people um, ask me questions a lot about what Hope Kids is doing. Um, I think in the Christmas time, there was a lot of generosity shown to Hope Kids. The Trunk or Treat event was a really cool way. And and I think we Discovery also provided um, pizza one night for our Hope Kids families that live in the area. And I just want you guys to know that there was a family who received um, a meal from Discovery and had um, a birthday parade for her daughter and a couple members from Discovery showed up for that. And she kept saying, but I don't go there. Why are they helping me? And, and so I just want you to know like that right there was so cool for me to be able to just say, well, you don't have, like, that's not the point. <laughs> like discovery is not just going to help you because they attend because you attend there. They want to help you because God loves you and they care about you. And there's always an open door if you want to explore that further. And so, um, I just think that is really cool and awesome. And so I just would say thank you so much to everyone who's been a part of supporting Hope Kids in the ways that we have supported Hope Kids up to this point.